is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, He is my song, cause You are good. Oh, you are good, so good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, cause you're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You are good, good. Oh, you are good, so good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, cause all I wanted to do is love you. All I wanted to do is worship you. All I wanted to do is lay you right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, and all I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is thank you right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Again. And all I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is lay you right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, and all I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is lay you right at your feet. Have to lift my hands to heaven. Let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, and all I wanted to is love you. All I wanted to is worship you. All I wanted to is thank you right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, and all I want to do is love you. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is stay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me. Rekindle the fire within me, Lord. Once again, because Jesus, every battle I 
eternal life and all our hope is in Jesus Christ and because of Jesus we have overcome because of Jesus every battle has been won because of Jesus we have eternal life and all our hope is in Jesus Christ and hallelujah hallelujah to the one who's Because of Jesus, every battle has been won. Because of Jesus, we have eternal life. And all our hope is in Jesus Christ.
Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Healing rain is falling down. Healing rain is falling down. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. So, so worthy. For from you are all things. And to you are all things. You deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things. To you are all things. You deserve the glory. And I say this this morning that as we spend time with those that are on our prayer list and many are going through some very difficult places in life they realize that it's because of prayer that things that some of them have been given death sentences many years ago but they're still alive. They're still trusting the Lord. We heard a report this last week of a girl, actually a young lady, given 2% chance to live. And she's still alive and still living and still moving on. We keep praying. We believe. We trust. There's one lady in Georgia that we've been praying for many, many years. 
you knew her testimony. She has a Job testimony. She said, Pastor Greg, it's a process. It's a procedure. It's where we, the Lord's working me through it. This is a lady that's been told many times, you got three months to live. You got six months to live. It's been six, seven years. She's still going on. But we keep praying for her. So when we sing a song like he is worthy of it all, we know he has our lives in his hands. And we keep trusting him. We don't look to our circumstance to see if God cares. We look to the God who cares and our circumstance will change. We trust him. We believe him. He's our hope. He's our answer. And so this morning we're reminded today that no matter what it is that we're facing, God cares. God's in control. Our answer is not in a doctor. Our answer is not in a bank. Our answer is not in some individual. Our answer is found in and that's why we sing, He is worthy of it all. And so this morning, would you lift the voice, your voices one more time and worship as unto the Lord. And let's sing it as unto Him once more again, that God is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Sing it again. And You're lift your voices in your hands unto Him. Lord, I thank you and I worship you. You are worthy of it all. We love your name. Oh, God, we rejoice in you. For you're holy and you're worthy, and we bless you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah. You're so worthy, oh, God. We give you praise. for my health. I thank you, you for my provision. I thank you for your leading. I thank you for your anointing. You are You're worthy of our praise and I bless you your name. Glory to the glory. You're worthy of it all. From you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You are worthy of it all. You're so worthy. From you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. You are worthy of it all, Jesus. Because you are worthy of it all. For from you, you are all things. things, to you are all, all things. things, you we deserve, deserve the glory. glory. Father, this morning we do lift your name above every name, for you're worthy of our praise. We just pray, Lord, as we open our hearts unto you, she would meet us in the area of our need, and for this we give you praise. In Jesus' holy name, everyone said amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. This is worth it all. You know, the anointing and the presence of the Holy Spirit is worth it all. 
We need to be reminded that where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You know, some people look for big crowds or whatever, certain things that have to happen or whatever it is. No, the Lord says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. And how many know things change in the presence of God, in his presence? And so we're grateful for the anointing and the presence of God's Holy Spirit in this room today. We welcome those that are viewing live stream. We're so glad that you tuned in from wherever you're viewing today. We welcome you. We ask that you would be open to the Holy Spirit to be touched by God today. There's a reason why you're listening. There's a reason why we're here today. Everything I believe is ordained of the Holy Ghost, ordained by God. So we don't want to leave the same way we came. We want to leave changed, and we need a word from the Lord today. So be open to receive from Him. Is there anyone this morning that has a testimony, something you want to share that God is doing that you want to let us all in on? Anyone? Well, you got about an hour and a half. <laughs> First of all, let me just say, it's good to see you again. How's everything? Going good? Blessing. Very blessed. Right. But, uh, say hello to us. How's everyone doing? Doing fine. Well, okay, Lord. All right. Can you hear me? My check. My check. One, two. Okay. All right, Father, I hear you. All right. So, uh, you sure? Because hey, my testimony would take it to well, seven yeah, Sundays. Give me about two minutes. Two minutes? Okay, I'll make it quick. Two minutes. Man, where do I start? Man, it's been a long <laughs> since 2002. What year are we in? We're 2021. 2002. It's, oh, it has been a long journey. 35 years young, just turned. Everything happened. Every great thing happened on the 4th. 4th of July, 4th of November. I was born on the 4th. Yay. But, um, man. 2002, I won't forget the year because my mom, she was there during the whole journey. Um, knowing what I know now, it wasn't like mental illness and stuff. It was demonic spirits. Like the hospital, the, the doctors, the psychiatrists, straight jacket, padded room, none of that could hold me because how we know the demons in the past Old Testament, how do we know that they didn't stop now? The only person that can cast out those demons was Jesus. In a hospital that they admit me in was in Zanesville. The Lord was always with me. It was called Genesis. There's power in his blood. Yeah. Like my old homies and family, they see the old me. They think it's no, I've been reborn again. Actually, now my wife, he got married on 8 8. This man, he married us. He married us. <laughs> he was like, You sure? You sure? You sure? Let's, let's counsel. I was like, that's right, I'm sure. But uh, pray for my wife because she's not seeing how the Holy Ghost works. She's not seeing it. So just pray for her. Pray for her strength. Give her strength because she she's not seeing it because Jesus said it. Those who have eyes, let them see. Those who have ears, let them hear. He didn't say those who have mouth, let them speak. You got to hear, see. But bless those who don't see but believe. Amen. So how you doing today? I'm blessed. I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm filled Amen. with the Spirit. That's why I'm here. Amen. Well, blessings to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's come a long way, and we thank God for what God has done in his life. Keep praying for them. Yes. Amen. Keep. Absolutely. So you hold fast and don't give in. Keep trusting him. He, he, he has the answer. Amen. Amen. You got the right answer. You're talking the right direction. So we keep praying and keep believing. Amen. Yes. Amen. God bless you. Good to see you again this morning. Anyone else with a testimony today? God is doing something. Yes. All the way back to Dulce. Yes. I just want to praise the Lord because... He healed me twice. One was the other day. I had this like pain in my lower lower part of my breast, and we prayed. He touched. He 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 uh, anointed me with oil, and 
the Lord took it, took it away. Amen. And amen. then, Thank you, Lord. amen for that. And then, uh, last night, I had this thing on my, like in my heart. And I said, what is this, Lord? I don't want to have any problem with my heart. And kind of like really painful to breathe. And then I just, you know, I prayed about it again. And then I asked him to hit, to touch me again on this part instead of this part. And today, this morning, I don't feel any more Amen. pain. Amen. So praise God for that. Thank you, Wilson. Appreciate that. Praise his name. Praise the Lord. Anyone else with a testimony? Okay. All righty. Um, last night, um, my daughter called me late, and she was with a friend, and they had been at their, her brother's house, and she was taking her friend home, and her friend lives in Dayton. And she texted me and said, Mom, I don't feel right uh, about taking her home, and I feel like we should turn around and, and come home. And I said, that's fine. You know, that's, that, you know I'm fine with that. And um, I waited up for him when they came in. Um, they both were crying. And I said, what's going on? And they said, you're going to think we're really crazy. And I said, no, what's going on? And um, she said, as we were driving down the road, she said, we both started feeling kind of sick, like something wasn't right. And she said, at one point, she looked at something on her car. She said, I looked down and she said, I saw I saw us in a terrible accident. And she said, I thought, what is that? And she said, my friends, her friends started feeling ill too. And she goes, I thought I was going to get really sick. Like she was physically feeling sick. And she said, we, as we passed the uh, exit, she said, we got sicker. She said, so we stopped at the fourth exit. And she said, they, I think it was a gas station they got into. And she said, they were playing Jesus take the wheel. You know, no, but that song hasn't been played. I haven't heard it for a long time, you know. And she said, I knew we had to go home. And that's when she texted, you know, she had texted us that I need to come home. And she said, as we turned around to come home, she said, it all lifted. And they felt better. Yeah. And today, I'm just praising God because... Last night they asked me to pray with them, you know, and I did. And it was she's funny because she said, you know, because you you're you had that with Jesus, you know, like grandma, grandpa, they have it really strong. I said, Tori, you too can have all of that, you know, but she always thinks the older you are, the stronger your relationship is with the Lord, you know. And I said, the Lord hears you too, but I did pray with them, you know, and I hugged them. And but this morning, I just woke up and I I just knew that the Lord had saved them from something. And I'm just so thankful because I have been saying to Greg for a while and other people, you know, for quite a while, but I mean, it's always been there, but it's been so strong that I want to hear so clearly from God. And I keep saying that even if everybody's going left and God says, but I want you to go right. Not that left is wrong, but it's wrong for me. I want to hear the Lord say, that's not what I want for you. And I see the Lord doing that, you know, even in our children or whoever. Just keep praying for your kids. Keep praying for each other because we are in the last days. And the enemy, he wants to take us down. You know, he wants, he wants to destroy us. But if we are tuned to the Lord and if we're praying for each other, praying for our children, praying for our parents, praying for each other, we don't know what God is saving us from. So we just have to be so in tuned. And this morning, my heart as a mom, I'm just so thankful and so grateful for what he's done. And we don't know. We don't know all the things God saves us from. He saves us from things, I'm sure, every day. Because Satan has, you know, 
he has things against us, but God says, no, today I'm just so thankful as a mom because I know that God saved two girls last night. I know. I can feel it. And I know because this morning I saw two girls who were glowing. They had called other people and they go, you two are being crazy. Just go. You know, you're fine. But they said something inside of us said no. And I said, Tori, you were hearing from God. That was God saying no. So even when everybody else says you're being silly, you're being crazy, I just say, listen, just ask the Lord to make us so in tune to what he's saying to us, especially now, because we are in the last days. We are in a fight. We're in a battle. And we've got to pray and just lift each other up. Does Pastor want to go first? Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> okay, I just have to say thank you, Lord, too. There was a storm at work, and the Lord just sailed right through the storm. And the songs fit so well today. But, um, so I just praise God for keeping me and protecting me. And and like she said, I called the sister in the Lord. I said, I need prayer. I'm getting persecuted for doing something right. And... and the Lord stood there. He told me to be steadfast, um, and I even worked better and harder and the best I could do because that's what glorifies God, to stay steadfast and lift one another up and keep shining for the Lord. No matter what others may say or react to you, you keep standing for the Lord. Yes, in fact, what Joy just said, the closer we get to the return of Christ, when you do right, it's going to be considered wrong or it's going to be mocked. Even even in the job, even on the job, it makes no sense in in the mind. It makes no sense, but that's the world in which we live. Yeah. Now and then, the Lord will put a burden on your heart to pray for something. Burden on my heart was to pray for the new president of OSU. Her name is uh, Christina Johnson's her name. I don't know a thing about her. I've seen her on TV two or three times, pray for. Well, what should I pray for? Well, just pray for. So I'm praying for, and the Lord said, write her letter. So I wrote her a letter. It was answered by the registrar. Her name is Miss um, Bricker. The registrar's answered the letter I sent the president. And basically, I said, uh, I've been involved in the OSU area since uh, like uh, 1945, because, in, I mean, 1949, because we moved in the OSU area there and lived there a year, went away, then I went to Ohio State undergrad, four and a half years, graduate school one year. But so I've been affiliated with the area. But I said, I said in my letter, one well, uh, main reason I'm writing it, you're a new president and there's poor lighting in the OSU area on the sidewalks. People go out to bars and restaurants and eat and they walk home to their dorm or their apartment, and the side streets are dark, and that's resulting in a lot of rapes as a result, and it just needs more lighting. Make it like daytime. Well, she wrote me back through the registrar saying, you know, she had a lot of priorities she had to work on and so forth. Well, three weeks ago, I'm watching the news, and Columbus police were involved in orchestrating where they want to put up off, oh, a lot of new lighting on the sidewalks all in the OSU area, not only on campus because the president would have something to do with the campus area, but the surrounding campus area where a lot of the juniors and seniors live. So they're getting more lighting. And I said in my letter, they needed more lighting 55 years ago in the OSU area, and you ought to do something about it. And I think she did. In the book of Acts, they came together and reported what the Lord had done. And uh, I believe that we need to share when we pray, as we've heard this morning, and then God answers the prayer. There's two things I want to mention, but thank you for praying for my eye. It's recovery, and we give God praise. But uh, we pray for protection. I pray for protection. Last Sunday, Andrew picked, picked us up and brought us because of my eye surgery. And uh, on the way home, 
he was going on the roundabout right near our house. And a car, you have the right of way when you're in the circle, but the car was coming from the right. And, you know, you assume they're going to stop because you stop when Andrew was right close to where he, he would approach. He was coming at a high rate of speed and did not stop. And Andrew threw the brakes on. And uh, I mean, I saw out of my right eye, this was going to be a terrible accident. But he stopped just in time and the car went through. So I thank God for protection. And then. And then I want to say that I've been praying for the election, different things. And uh, I was praying for, although we don't live in Virginia, I was praying for the election in Virginia. And I believe God answered my prayer. And uh, one of the things I want to say is that we heard we stayed up. And we heard the exception speech from the one that won. And I'd never heard it in my life, but maybe it's happened. But they had a prayer. It was a prayer that you and I would pray before he spoke, giving God glory for the victory and that God had help them, and I give God praise. Well, I just want to thank the Lord for giving me another year to live for him. <laughs> and I'm excited because things are moving in the prayer center, and we're going to see that building up before you know it. Matter of fact, Greg called me and says, Mom, what colors are we going to put in? I said, well, I don't know. We'll have to think about that. But this is exciting to me because it's something that uh, I have looked forward to, and I sure, I'm sure you have too. But the Lord is doing a great work, and he's providing, and I thank God for what he's doing. Amen. And he's my friend for a while. I brought him to Ohio from Pennsylvania. Um, Accidentally, the doctor gave him like 30% of his heart to live. And last two weeks ago, he was like blood clot or something. And I was praying for him. I went to his home and I asked God to heal all those blood clot. Now he's walking. <laughs> and he couldn't get out the bed at all. He couldn't get, it was crippled. But God said, you know, he raised people from the dead, blind to see, crippled to walk. So here he, here he is, come to praise the Lord. He's going to be joining us here. Praise, and make sure you guys will come about my praise his name. I was talking about, I was talking about Jesus any day. Oh. And someone against me, I want to hold that for next week, but I just want to, I can't, okay. I can talk. <laughs> and then um, they were saying, that you cannot talk uh, religion, religion in, at work. And then I, well, I went to bed, who is the highest. I said, but can I talk about Jesus? They said, all you want. Anything about Jesus, you can talk. And then I talk to them. See, you guys, I know they do different religions, but you need to know that Jesus is the only one. Amen. The way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Yeah. There's a member of a so, remnant okay. church right there. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and she doesn't wait until Sunday morning to start praying for people. <laughs> Amen. 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 So she doesn't wait till, till Sunday to start praying for people. She says, this man needs healed. She lays on him, and I'm going to tell you, that's, that's, how, that's how it goes. That's how it should be. That's exactly right. Amen. Thank God for that. We're going to move on to the development here very quickly. Uh, we had some activity with our contractor. Good things are happening. They're moving forward. 
and uh, this is where we're at with structural and mechanical. It's come down. We need 8,000 to get that. Now, let me just say this. Be led of the Holy Spirit as, as he would lead you to give, because once we get the 8,000 done, then we'll start putting together a, a construction budget. And we don't have that in place right now. We need to get the engineering finished. They, they called this week. They wanted to know about how you want your ceilings and how you want your floors and how you want the different things. And so it's all coming. And so uh, <clears throat> they're working hard. Pray that the civil engineering comes to an end. There's all kinds of things there. Uh, it's been over 17 months on civil engineering. But if things are moving forward. Pray that God would use you. Uh, as it relates to the 8,000 that we get that taken care of, we've come down $21,000. That's a God thing. That's a miracle. And uh, we're going to uh, probably for the January View the Land magazine, we're going to put in there what God did this year financially. We're going to list it all because it, you got to see it is into the multiplied thousands of dollars. I mean, we're going to list it. All the things that God has done financially in this ministry. I mean, if you look around you, I'm, I'm telling you, there's not deep pockets anywhere and there's not hundreds of people out there. You know, there, it's just not the case. God is doing phenomenal things and it's all miraculous. And we're trusting the Lord and believing him to go debt free all the way through the process. Oh, let me say this to you. I've got to say this to you. Uh, I believe this was a God thing. In fact, not, not believe it. I know it was God, a God appointment. And uh, they got so much construction over here on Hamilton Road, you don't even know what, how, to, how to drive anymore because everything's shut down. And uh, when I woke up, turned my car on, and my tire gauge was a mess. Well, I go over to across the street from where I live, where I used to work at that oil change car wash and he's in there. So he helps me out. We well, couldn't figure out how to get in there. It was all blocked off. Every road, every driveway was all shut down. You couldn't get in. Anyways, long story short, I was able to get God in there. And, uh, I really felt it was a God thing because when he started talking, he first thing he said was, How's the building coming? How's everything coming? And I told him, he says, well, I'm going to let you know I've got family, or not family, but friends that live on Beaver Road. Now, Beaver Road is the northern road to our property. I'm going to say this to you, if you don't already know it. We have 60 feet of access to Beaver Road. That's all we have, the northern border, but that's all we need. That gave us natural gas last year when they brought the gas line down because we have 60 feet on Beaver Road. We are, were able to tap into the natural gas. He told me this last week that his friends that live on Beaver Road said that Les Wexner just bought the first parcel of land on Beaver Road and he's moving down Mink Street. Now, if that is confirmed, if he has bought that first piece on Beaver Road, I believe they tied the gas lines together for a reason. I think not too long down the road, water's going to come. It may be annexed to New Albany. I don't know. But now they're coming across Mink over to Beaver. So there's something about Beaver Road that's, that's interesting. So keep praying about that. And if I hear any more, I'll give you some updates. But I, I was told that this past week. That's interesting. That's very, very interesting because there's a lot of activity in this area. And what that could be, that could, that could mean city water is coming. So uh, that, would be, that would be huge. That would be huge. So keep praying for that. God's doing great things. If I hear something that confirms that, I'll let you know. But that was great. That was a great word. And I told him, I said, if you hear something, give me a call. Just call me. I, don't wait until I come in. Let me know because we need that information. So I, I know the Lord has it all in control. I know it's going to happen the way he wants it done. It'll be amazing when it's done. It, it'll be absolutely phenomenal because it's fulfilling his purpose. It's not our purpose. We didn't sit down and write it out. This is what God spoke. This is what he wants to achieve. And so keep praying and we'll update you as we get word. 
and uh, but we know it's going to be phenomenal. It's already phenomenal, but it's been going to be even greater and greater as we move forward. Amen. I'm going to have Daryl come at this time, and uh, he's going to share God's word with us, and then following him, we will have uh, communion together. Morning. Good morning. Well, I guess you would say this is the, uh, the third edition. Uh, I think five and six weeks ago, I just we taken a look at um, the scripture and particularly started looking from Daniel. And in Daniel, God showed Daniel that when the when the Jewish people were taken and were taken from their, their land into captivity over at Babylon, 70 years later, they would come back. And so we've kind of gone through some of that. I, I know not all of you have been here for this, but I want to say to you, there's one. He's got a couple more up here. Somebody needs one. <laughs> yeah, don't get cut, bud. So this first is a review, if you will. And, and then uh, hopefully it won't bore those of you who have already been here. And I think God has some things he wants to say to us. Now, I, I pretty well had this together. And, and I don't remember whether my wife asked, now, what's it going to be about this time? Or, you know, what's the subject? And I... I really didn't know what to say, but in the process of me talking to her about that, this, this thought came to mind. We need to press in when we're pressed. Now, you think about each one of the testimonies today. People were pressed, right? And what did they do? Pressed into God. They started praying and pressing into God. And I want to say to you, that's just not something that happened back then, not something that happened to other people here. That should be our lifestyle. And, and it's going to become more and more so as the end draws nearer. So once the 70 years of the Babylonian captivity were accomplished, the, the captives led by Zerubbabel, and interestingly, those who weren't here, he was urged by the king who held him captive for those 70 years he was urged by the King Cyrus to return, first of all, to his Jewish land. And second of all, when you get there, make sure you rebuild the temple. That was the king's message to him. And when he got there, there were some people kind of liked it in chaos like it was. The walls all tumbled down. No temple. They liked that. And so there were some local people who got all upset about that. And in that process... They did a lot of opposition and eventually caused it, the building of the temple to cease. But <laughs> I want to say to you, man isn't in control. Advers adversaries are not in control. God is. Okay, so what did, what did God do? Then the Lord moved on the prophet Haggai, and he urged Zerubbabel to do what? resume building. He says, it's time for you to get going. You can't stop, can't let this lay there. It's time to get going. And so he started on the temple again. And of course, as you would expect, opposition arose. And when this opposition arose, this time it came from people. They called them governors, people of authority who were across the river. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit and just see what that meant. So these people tried to use a political system to handle their problem. And so they went back to the king, went back to King Cyrus, and they said, hey, would you check back through the records and look at the archives and make sure these people out here building this temple have the right to do that? Now, there's been a lot of talk lately about what we have rights to do and what we have not right to do, right? 
and, and ours may not be in the archives in Washington, but they're in the archives, okay? We have promises of God, what we need to do. And so, so the people, the opposition, wrote this letter to the king, and you have to really like what God does. In that, they said, these Jewish troublemakers, did they have permission to build down here? And so a search was made, and they found that they had permission. But more than that, guess what the king did? Then the king further ordered those opposing, those governors, he said, make sure that the reconstruction, number one, get there is something here that says they can do that. And number one, you stay away from this. Don't mess with them. Let them do their building. And they've been harassing and been on the scene all along. Number two, you pay the cost of building this. So here he has, and he said, you do that by taking a tax on the people who you govern. And so here we have people now who are in the process of building a temple getting the money from the, the opposers, so to speak, and they're building a temple. Number three, make sure you also provide them enough animals because they, they're down there and, and, they, and basically they went with little or nothing. And he says, make sure you give them the animals so they can do the sacrifice. Now, Greg, we don't need the animals, okay? We had the sacrifice. It's already happened. But at that point, they needed the animals, okay? And number four, have the Jewish people pray for the king, <laughs> So here we have the opposers, and he said, I want you to tell those Jewish people, I'm expecting them to pray for me. So here we have people opposing God's people, and the king says, make sure you tell them to pray for me. Number five, they warned whoever would change this edict was to have his house torn down. Don't change one jot or tittle in this. Your house will be torn down. They're going to take timbers from your house. They're going to erect, if you will, a gallows out of your own timber. And then I want you to hang that guy on that. Now, if we had any kind of punishment like that in this day and age, there wouldn't be much opposition, okay? But now what we do with them, we turn them loose. We'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll let that go. Okay. So the Jewish people were able to finish building the temple. So today we want to take a, a, a look at then, the last time we talked, we talked a little bit about Ezra coming to Jerusalem. So sometime later, the new king, Xerxes, then sent his secretary and a scribe, which is basically a Bible, someone who understood the Bible and the Jewish law, and he sent him to down to Jerusalem, and what he wanted him to do is he wanted him to establish the magistrates. He wanted him to establish the judges to judge the people. And when he arrived, one of the things he found, and there's, there's two or three chapters of this in there, but one of the things he found was when these men got down there and took their wives, their Jewish wives, down there, then they found out that the little girls where they went were pretty good looking. And some of them, started marrying heathen. Not only that, you, you know, there's a, a, a passage in Malachi where it says God hates divorce. If you look when that was made, it was made at this very time. And what he's saying, what he was saying to the Jewish men was, some of you guys even divorced your faithful wife so he could have this pretty girl. And he says, that's not God. That's not how God works. And so 110 men had already done that. And, and all of them had to put away their foreign wives. So here we have Ezra going down there, and he's starting to law in. <clears throat> now, the, the period of rebuilding the temple under Zerubbabel took 21 years. And there's a timeline there that you can look at, but it took 21 years to get that temple up. Now, think about that. Didn't happen overnight. Happened under a lot of opposition. They had to bring timber in. You know, it all was happening, but it took 21 years. And then 60 years later, Ezra came down. In the meantime, we haven't really talked any about this. In the meantime, the book of Esther is written in there. 
Okay, so all that then Esther was happening between the time that first of all that Zerubbabel went down there and then Ezra went down. And then the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah together took about 110 years. Now we can sit down and read that in a couple hours. And you kind of get the impression sometime God's awful slow. I really wish he'd get a lot faster. I read, you know, I can read this in three hours, but it, it took 110 years. You know, so what we're reading, you know, is not necessarily in our mind what really was happening, and the opposition was there. So now we're ready for the book of, the, of Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah demonstrates what I would call the blue-collar side of our faith in God. He's, he's a man who was a practical day-to-day, -day, and he was working with the Spirit of God to accomplish God's will. And so it's one thing to be someone who's a teacher, but he's working it out. He's living it out. Now, that's basically, Greg, what the testimonies were about today. These were Nehemiah-type things. We were living out this life. And then it said, while Ezra was used to bring spiritual renewal, God's holiness to the lives of men. And so basically we have contrast, so to speak, but it's pretty obvious both of them are needed. So here's what life lesson I felt from it. God is challenging people of faith to trust him. He's the one who moves the mountains. Each one of you said today you prayed. Each testimony we prayed. So when you get pressed, press in. That, you know, that's the whole, the whole situation. We need to press in. God will move the mountains. However, we express our trust by picking up their shovel sometime. There's certain things that we have to do certain times to, to, to prepare for God's move. And so that's kind of the, the balance that we're working on. So back to Nehemiah. He, his Jewish heart, and by the way, from what I can tell, he was born in captivity. But evidently, his parents, had, grandparents, had put things in him that he had a heart toward the Jewish people, and he knew he's a Jew, and he was worried about what was going on. So his Jewish heart had a concern for his people and his country. And in Nehemiah 1, 2, he, he writes, Hanan, one of my brethren, in other words, a Jew, came back from Jerusalem, from Ju Judea, and I asked him concerning the Jews who had escaped captivity and concerning Jerusalem. I want to know what's going on down there. What they needed was Facebook, right? Well, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, they didn't know what was going on down there. And so he's asking him. And they said to me, here's what, here's what Hannah and these people said to him. The survivors are in great distress. Now, it's been how many years? Yeah, it's, it's been, yeah. Since they were down there. And then there's even time in between that 60 years. And so now we have them being there and they're still in great distress and puts a word in there that I find very interesting. And that's the word reproach. Um, basically, you know, as I think of reproach, I'm thinking that here we have God's people in distress. And what kind of testimony does that give for what God can do? And evidently, there wasn't much change in the spiritual atmosphere in Jerusalem because of that testimony, and that pretty much stayed the same all of those number of years. And so I think reproach is something that I probably never really was concerned enough about. But when I, when I looked at that, it it's talks about our witness of disgrace due to barrenness. No, not seeing any fruit. And we ought to be disgraced about that. And I'm not sure I, ne I have been enough. You know, we need to be disgraced that, that we don't see God's plan moving forward. And yeah, I thought it was interesting. It's, it says Christ suffered reproach for his, father, for his father's sake. If, you know, it, again, this is the New Testament, and you can go there. But basically, he said that he's going to carry through he was going to do God's will because he wanted to take away the reproach. And so 
They were concerned about reproach. I'm not sure I was concerned enough. So these men also said, these walls are broken down. The gates are burned with fire. So here's Nehemiah saying, so I was, so it was when I heard these words that I sat down, I weeped and I mourned. How long? I put that in capital for me. He mourned many days. Sometimes I might mourn many minutes. And, and, but he mourned many days because of the reproach and for what it looked like God's people weren't getting accomplished. More, more so than that, I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. So here he is, someone who sees the need, and he decides the one who can solve the need is who? Not him, God, right? And he starts fasting and praying. All right, God, what are we going to do here? And <laughs> Greg, I, had, I wrote this note in there because I was here a couple weeks ago, and I heard this guy give a sermon that says, Good intentions are not enough. Remember that? Good intentions alone are not enough. God's looking for people who are, what? A good investment. All right. <laughs> Am I a good investment? Not as good as I need to be. I know that. God's looking for people who are a good investment. And I think that's what's happening. Think back a year ago. Think back two years ago. Are you different than you were at that time? Is your investment worth more today than it was two or three years ago? I know mine is. God's really challenged me in this time of what we need to do and what we need to be. And I think that's, you know, I think that's part of what he's trying to accomplish through us. Nehemiah was a king's cupbearer. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means he basically was a guy that served wine. At the king's table, he, he took that wine and put it before everybody. But before he put it for the, to the king, what did he do? He took a drink. Now, it seemed like the king probably didn't mind him drinking before him, right? And what was that for? He wanted to make sure there wasn't any poison in it. Now, if you will, that's putting your life on the line. Because you don't know what happened this last week or so. We've had a a shooting on a set, a, a movie out west. Nobody seems to want to admit what happened there totally, but somebody evidently put a live round where they didn't think there was a live round, if you will. Somebody poisoned the wine, and we didn't know it was poison. We found out, didn't we? Yes. So Nehemiah was the king's cupbearer, and the cupbearer had a great influence on the king. They were together, if you will, he was his right-hand man. So it wasn't just that he tasted his wine. He was somebody that he confided in. He was somebody that was there with him. And, and, and he was someone who, if you, you remember the story of Joseph, and they had the chief baker and the chief butler who were in prison. That chief butler, if you look at that word, that's the same word. He was a cupbearer to the king. Now, I don't know what he did, Greg, but I know that he never went back to do it again for the king. He took his head off, didn't he? So someplace or other, the king lost total confidence in that guy. And so we don't want, we don't want the king to lose confidence in us. So Nehemiah was a cupbearer. And while serving the king, the king realized that Nehemiah was very sorrowful. So the king stated, this is nothing but sorrow of heart. He knew this man so well that he knew there's something really deeply bothering this guy. So when he asked Nehemiah, Nehemiah stated the sorrow was for the city of Jerusalem. And I, <laughs> this is an interesting way of putting it. And the place of my father's tombstones. So basically saying, I got a heritage back there. And I'm concerned about what's going on there. I have a, I'm concerned. I have a, re, there's reproach back there and we need to take care of it somehow. Okay. And it lies in waste. Its gates are burned with fire. And what was the king's response? It pleased the king to send me. And right, in, right at the end of that, there's four little words. The king says, I'll have you go back. You go back there. 
But Nehemiah said, I did what? Set a time. And again, Greg, good intentions. If we're not careful setting a time sometimes, it doesn't happen. So he set the time. They went back and, and they sent him back. Now, Nehemiah asked for letters from the, the king from the king to the governors of the region beyond the river. Where did we hear about that before? Those are the birds that opposed building the temple, wasn't it? So he told the king, says, I want letters to go to those guys, and I want them to realize you're there to let us go in and don't bug us. Let us go in. Now, these kings took care of God's people. And so, basically so that they'll provide safe passage. But he said, now the king also, besides, sent captains of the army and horsemen. So not only did he send a letter, he sent troops. <laughs> they, didn't, they, they never had any problem getting in, by the way. And since Nehemiah had been a trusted and a faithful cupbearer, Nehemiah's God was able to touch the king's heart. I, I want to challenge you. I don't know what challenge you have where you're working now. I think all of us have faced some challenge or, well, I don't, I don't work anymore. I'm retired. Well, where you live, you're working for God. And, and so I want to say to you, be faithful and trustworthy in your area of responsibility to honor God. This is a time where God's people need to raise up. We need to honor God. We need to be people who take away that reproach. And who knows? God may have some unknown plans for you. We don't want anything else to do, right? So the opposition does return when Sam Ballot and Tobiah heard what was happening. They were deeply disturbed that a man had come. And I want you to look at what he said. All they knew was this much. They came to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. The only stated reason that's in that letter that went to them, and there's sometimes God gives us visions of what's to come, and there's certain parts of that we probably need to keep hid in our heart. Mary kept a lot of things hid in her heart, didn't she, about Jesus. There's time we need to ask God, is this something I should share or should I not share? And, and so... All he knew was that they, they were going to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. And they got upset about that. Now, this stated purpose was seeking the well-being, not to mention the building of the wall. And he, had told, and he had told no one what God had put in his heart. And that's in 2.12, in verse 2.12. And so Nehemiah went out at night. He's gotten to Jerusalem now. He's going out at night, and it was just him and a couple of people, and they viewed the walls of Jerusalem. They've been there about three days. People are feeling a little comfortable. They're there. So it's nighttime, and he goes out, and he views the broken down walls and the gates which were burned with fire, and the officials did not know when I had gone or what I had done. They had no idea what was going on. Then I said to them, so he's getting his gang together who's going to do the work. The Jewish people, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or others who did the work, he got them together and he said, we need to have a meeting. So there are certain things you can share in a meeting that you can't share to everybody outwardly, okay? You see the distress that we're in. Come and let us build the walls of Jerusalem that we no longer may be a reproach. There it is again. And I told, and, and it's interesting, as you look at that, there's no response from them. But look what he went ahead and did. And I told them of the hand of God which had been upon me and the king's words. So now I got God on my side and also got the king on my side. So he told them that. So they said, let us rise up and build. They set, they strengthened the hands to do the good work. Well, these guys are still around. Sam Ballot, Tobiah, Jerusalem, heard of it. They laughed at us and they despised us. Now, 
That doesn't mean they didn't like us. That means they hated us. They despised us. So I answered them and said to them, <clears throat> if you have the word of God, if you know what God has directed you to do, there's certain times that the enemy needs that planted right in him. And that's what Nehemiah did. He said to them, an important word is he said it. He said to them, do you realize that there's life and death in your tongue? Life and death in your tongue. You have that ability with the word of God. We were talking earlier about a two-edged sword. You got one. You got a sword. And where is it? In here. We have a two-edged sword in our mouth. We don't have to fight. I'm not good with a sword. I can't even imagine taking a chance of getting cut with one. But, I, but the two-edged sword we can use, can't we? And he said to them, the God of heaven himself will prosper us. Now, he's making a statement to Satan's men, what? God's going to put you down. God of heaven is going to take care of us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and we will build. But you have no heritage in what's going on here. You have no right. You have no memorial in Jerusalem. This is our place. This is what God has given us. This is where our heritage is. You have no right here. Life lesson. The enemy opposes God's plans by attacking God's people. We call that spirit. Spiritual warfare. And if we're not careful, when we get in a situation like that, how do we fight back? By attacking them, don't we? My natural tendency is I, I want to say something. You know, they've been derogatory. I want to say something to them. But, but what did Nehemiah did? He spoke God's promises to the enemy. Not what he thought, what God thought. His opposition is against God and his people. In other words, this guy who's causing the hassle, his opposition is not against us. It's not against me. It's against who? It's against God, because this is what God said we're going to do. There's a lot to be said right in there, but we'll save that for another time. Nehemiah chapter 3 displays a unity and a motivation of the Jewish people. The reconstruction of the walls and the gates was a challenge of only... God Almighty and his provision and his encouragement could accomplish. Does that sound familiar? You ever ever worked on something that was bigger than you? <laughs> you ever look at something and think, there's no way we can do that? That's not a bad place to be. Because when that happens, who are we going to depend on? We're going to depend on God. And that's exactly what, what was going on here. I'm not opposed to uh, you saying something if you want to. Make a comment, by the way, but I know we got a number of things to do, so I'm a pushing here. If you go back then to Nehemiah and read what happened, there are 40 groups of people given responsibility. A certain section of that wall was their responsibility. They had to they had to take care of that part of the wall. Usually, it was done by how many was in their group. And, and, you know, so it was done according to their ability. And their 40, 40 groups took up their individual areas of task to accomplish the whole. Probably something about that could be said. Probably a little, that almost make a sermon, Greg, and work on that. So the archaeologists have found that that wall was how old, thick? Eight foot. Now, I don't know. Help me out. That's a, probably to the to the back of the chairs on the first row there. That's how thick that wall was or building, okay? <clears throat> Remember, the neighbors weren't happy. In verse 4, or 4-1, it says, when Sanballat heard, he was furious, very indignant, and he mocked the Jews, and the opposition ridiculed, discouraged their efforts. However, Nehemiah prayed. Remember? When you get pressed, what do you do? Press in. He prayed. It's a spiritual battle. It's not flesh and blood. And here's his prayer. Hear, O oh our God, for we are, what? <laughs> we are despised. Turn their reproach where? 
back on their heads. Now, one commentary took a look at that and he said, basically that, that says, he thinks that came from Psalm 109, which would have been something that uh, Nehemiah would have had at his disposal where David was being pressed and he's out and uh, running from the enemy. And, and you, you read Psalm 109 and basically in that he's saying what? What they're trying to do to us, you do to them. You do it. I don't want to do it. You do it. The result, so they built the wall. The entire wall was joined together. Think about that. Clear around Jerusalem. Somebody might know how many feet or yards or whatever that is. I'm not sure. Clear around. And how much of it was built? Halfway up. So it's all joined together, but it's still not high enough. But what they could shoot over it. Still not high enough, but what they could jump over. And so sometimes God gives us a, a chance to be, um, to have some victory, but not necessarily total victory. And I think that was what was happening here. And so, uh, so half the height for the people had a mind to work. And <laughs> I want to say to you, the mind's the biggest hassle we're going to have. And their mind could have looked and seen what? All this disarray, all of this junk, all of these trees coming up in, in this wall. It's been a century and a half it's set there. And now just think what junk it was like. And they, they didn't have a backhoe. <laughs> you know, they, they didn't even have, if you will, anything except their hands and a few tools, which were very, very elementary. And, and so here they are. They had a mind to do this. And the circumstance was a lot bigger than what they could handle on their own. The opposition intensifies. They're not done yet. Sand ballot. Let's, let's take a... I'm sorry, but I'm a teacher, and I'm reading through this, Greg. And we still got sand ballot, and we still got Tobiah, and how long ago was it that they opposed Ezra, or opposed Zerubbabel? If you turn back, Zerubbabel started his work in 538, and now Ezra and, 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 and I mean, excuse me, Nehemiah, we're now at 450. Now, these are either old dudes, and I'm thinking, Lord, what is going on here? My head wouldn't go any further, right? I said, there's got to be somebody who understands this more than I do. Well, let, let me show you what, what I found. Those names are not necessarily people names. They're names of, if you will, of position. And they could, in fact, be individual names. And there were people named that. But just for instance, Sanballat, that's a Babylonian name. And you know what it means? It means, the, they're talking about the moon god, sin has given life. Now think about that. Sin, the moon god, has given life. And that's what this guy's living with. And we're saying, no, he hasn't. The one that's given life is in heaven. So he was the governor of Samaria, and he was Nehemiah's chief political opponent. And interestingly... In the process of this, he sounded like a lot of the things he said that he really believed in Yahweh, <clears throat> the God of heaven. If you will, he was a nominal, very nominal Christian. And, and here he is opposing what God wants done. Now, I'm not telling you we won't have nominal Christians who might want to oppose what you want to do, okay? Now, Tobiah was an Amorite. <clears throat> and if you remember the people of Am Ammon, when, when, they, when we, they came out of uh, Egypt and they were coming across, they wanted to get down the road through Ammon. And these people said, what? Mm -mm, you don't get to go through here. And ever since that time, God's, that they've been, if you will, they were opposing what God wanted done and they're God's enemy. And so he was, if you will, he was, he was an Ammonite, and his name means God 
Now I'm going to, or I mean the Lord, I'm talking about Yahweh, the Lord is good. That's what his name meant. He was a worshiper of Yahweh, and his son had married a daughter of one of the leaders who were building the wall. Now think about that. These are the people opposing what God was wanting to do, and yet they had a, had some faith in what in God. And I just want to say to you, you know, you never know who your adversaries are going to be. So just, you know, just hold steady. Let God be what he wants to be. There were also other adversaries, the Arabs, the, the rest of the Amorites, the Asterites. It goes on and on in verse 7. And they became very angry, all of them, and they conspired, and they decided what we're going to do is we're going to attack this bunch before that wall gets any higher. We're going to attack them, and, and more than that, we're going to cause confusion. So, circumstances can overwhelm. And during that same time, the strength of the laborers is failing because there is so much rubbish around the wall that they're trying to build. They can hardly get to the wall. And there's just a lot of rubbish. So the first half was probably the easiest half. And now we're trying to get the rest of it made. And now we got all this opposition. I hope this isn't a prophecy, Greg. <clears throat> Nehemiah and the builders' reaction. We made, here, here they are. They're pressed again. What are they going to do? They're pressing in. He made our, we made our prayer to our God, set a watch. I picked up the shovel right there, right? They prayed, but they also set a watch. So they got somebody standing, watching day and night. So they set a watch day and night. And they also had some allies, if you will. These, these are Jewish people who should have been on their side, but they're not. And they bring discouragement. How many times? Ten times. Now, you think the devil won't try to wear down the saints? He will do it. Now, some of you have been there, right? And every time, what's our, what's our goal? What, what do we need to do? We're getting pressed. We've got to press in, right? And give the thing over into God's hands because we can't handle it anyway. We can try, but we can't handle it. So we give it over to God. And then they, they said, from whatever place you turn, they will come upon us. In other words, they're saying, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get this about done, and then they're going to turn on you, and they're going to kill you. <clears throat> let, let me go back. Um, you, you, can, you can look at this later if you want. Back in Daniel, Daniel 9.25, and it's not all of that verse even on Daniel 9.25. Toward the end of it, it says, the street... When they talk a street, they're talking about the square. They make a promise. God makes a promise through the prophet Daniel. This square is going to be rebuilt again and the wall. So he uses Daniel. What is this? I don't know how many years before. A couple hundred at least before. He uses this. It says the street shall be built. This I, I think of Somerset, Ohio, if you've ever been there. You know, they got a center that you go around. You've seen that in town. So they're saying that square will be rebuilt. And then the last comment it makes, even in troublesome times. I think God was looking ahead, and he had Daniel write down what? It's, it's going to be done. There's going to be troublesome times. And so they had that promise. Now, if you're, if you're going through a difficult time, you need a promise of God because the enemy will work your head to the point that you lose out. You need God's promise. You need to know what God's word says by his stripes. Whatever it is you're going through, we, we need that promise. So it, the promise of Daniel 9.25 became their encouragement. The street, the open square shall be built again. And the wall, even in troublesome times. And then the life lesson in that, the promises of God's word can sustain people in troublesome times. 
There are times you have nothing to stand on. You still got the pain. You still got the fever. And anything stand on is what? God's word. God's word doesn't change. Not one jot, one tittle will be changed. We can stand on that. That's as good a foundation as God as, has ever been made. As I say, as God ever made. That, it's as good a foundation as we have. The opposition can strengthen our resolve. Now, here they are opposing God's people. And what do you think that made the God's people do? We're not going to let this happen. You ever been there? You get to the point that you get a lot of opposition. You say, no, we're not, we're not going to let this happen. We're, we're going to hold our own. And so they can strengthen resolve. More 413 says, therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall. There were areas that were more vulnerable, and so he's got troops. He's got men behind those walls and at the openings. Most of the gates are still not built, just the wall. And he set people according to their families, and each one of those areas, those 40 groups of people, they had swords, they had spears, they had bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, the leaders, and the rest of the people, again, life and death is where? And he said, he said, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord. And we, you know, when, when they're facing you with a gun, what can you do? You, you can, you can focus on that if you're not careful and not remember. God said, we're going to do this. So don't forget it. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. And he fights. And this is, and then he, then he makes another encouragement. This is your future for your families and for their future. This is not, we're not doing this. For no reason, we're doing it for your future, for your family's future, the grandkids' future. You know, it goes on and on. The result, our animals heard that it, the plot, they, they were, they were going to come up on them and not let them know that they were going to attack them and were going to fight them off. But God let them know about it. And when, when the enemies heard that their plot was known to us, remember, they prayed. Back there, and God had brought their plot to nothing. <coughs> so here they are moving forward. <laughs> All of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. <coughs> half worked on construction, half held spears, shields, bows, armor. <coughs> Leaders were behind all of the house of Judah. So now we got leader support too, but behind here, they're going to make sure that we have that support. And then he said, <coughs> if they come up on some area, then we're to blow a trumpet. And when you hear a trumpet, you come to that. And that trumpet, the guy that was going to blow the trumpet was situated right by him. All right. So we labored in the work. Half the men held spears. From daybreak until the stars appear. <coughs> Life lesson. Steady, enduring work on our part. And God's wisdom for defending the work moved the building forward. I just want to put one other thing in the midst of this. As this was all going on. There was one thing happening in the people. If you look back in their history, an economic crisis that occurred before Nehemiah arrived, there was a famine and a great <clears throat> and, and a heavy uh, turning had and taxing had forced many of the debtors to become bankrupt. So a lot of the people, if you will, were slaves to their own people. And the word of God says back in and uh, I think it's in Deuteronomy and, and back in Numbers, if, if you're loaning money to your brother, what, how much interest are you charging? Zero. Zero. And here they are, not only charging them interest, they're taking over their land, they're taking over everything they have. And so now, here are these people who came back who are now thinking they were free. Now, 
they're probably in worse shape than they were under the king back in Babylon. I hope that's not happening in our country, but I'll let you worry about that. <clears throat> so they became slaves to the creditors, and they lived in extreme poverty. When Nehemiah arrived, they saw a whole different kind of leadership. They had an honest leader, who, and they cried to him for justice. He became very angry. Nehemiah became angry at his own people because they weren't following what God said to do. And, and when he was appointed governor in chapter 5, he lived very frugally. And if you read it in there, the other people lived very lavishly. Not that we have that in our government, but they did back then. And they lived very lavishly, and they did it at the people's expense. So they took all the money from the people so they could live in luxury. Mm. Nehemiah feared the Lord, and he instituted a, ref uh, a reform. Those opposing the wall building, Sanballat, Sanballat Tobiah, and Gershon, and Nehemiah, asked Nehemiah to come to a meeting. Now, we're, the wall is going up. We're almost done. <clears throat> Before, they had asked him, you know, can we help you build that wall? Remember back then he said, you don't have any heritage here. Remember that? He said, no, you can't help us. You can't help us. We're God's people, and we're doing what God wants. You can't help us. So now they decide, you know what we're going to do? We're going to ask him to come to a meeting. So ask him to come to a meeting, and what they wanted to do was negotiate. What? What were they going to negotiate? I have no idea. But I don't know how he's, it just says he recognized. So God evidently showed him that what their plot really was, they wanted him to come away from his reinforcements, go out to this meeting out in Judah, and guess what they're going to do when he gets out there? They're going to cut his head off. But he recognized their plot, and the th plot was they, they had thought to harm him. And he sent his met, and, and they sent the message how many times? Four. Remember, the other guys were ten times. This one's four times. Talk about persistence. And he said, and and what was his re what was his response? If you're pressed, do what? Press in. Oh God, strengthen my hands. And my God, remember Tobiah and Sambalat according to their works. So the wall was finished. And so all of this opposition, and every time they got pressed, they pressed in, and the wall was finished. And all of that happened in how many days? 52, 52 days. How long did it take to get the temple up? How many? <laughs> okay. That's that'll be your assignment. Look at that. It's in here. 52 days. And the enemies were very disheartened, for they perceived that what, what were they disheartened at? The fact that the wall was up? The fact that the Jews did it? No, because God had done it. And I was in a situation one time where somebody kept saying, now, it's not because you are a church, they said, but it's because, and they told all the reasons, and all the time they're saying that, what was the reason? Because you were a church. And that's what's happening here. It's God they're opposing. We think they're opposing us. No, they're not. They're opposing God. That's a difficult place to be in because God has, he makes the last judgment. Life less than the opposition appeared to be against the Jewish people, but even the enemy knew in the end. He knew. He knew that they were opposing God. So the wall was completed, which had laid in ruin for nearly a century and a half in less than two months, and it happened in spite, in spite of all of the opposition. So when you get pressed, do what? Press in. Are you finished in about 52 minutes? <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. We appreciate that.
When you're pressed, press in. Don't give in. Don't look around you. Don't look up. Don't look down. Trust the Lord. Believe Him. Keep praying. Keep trusting. The Lord's promise is yea and amen. So we hold fast to that. We're going to have a time of communion this morning before we close. It's, it's a little late, but we're okay. If you have to run off, do so. Everybody seem to be sitting tight, which is great. We're going to have some time of communion. Let me just say this. I felt led as I was sitting there this morning, listening to the word that as we take communion, if you're sick in body, if you're sick in body, and as we take the cup, I want you to believe for your healing. By his stripes we were healed. And as you take that cup, you believe for your healing, whatever that might be. Those watching by live stream, Tanya, we're praying for you. And those that are listening, if you have sickness in your body, as we take the cup, believe that the blood of Jesus Christ will heal us and touch us. You know, one of the things that's going on probably more so than ever before is mental health issues. Mental health issues. God's in control of all of our body. Turn your mind over to Him. Turn your mind over to Him. As we trust the Lord, He renews our mind. Puts us at rest. There's a lot of things going on in this world that troubles people. But we know our hope is in Him. So today as we take the emblems, I want you to act upon what these emblems represent. And understand that it is God that said, do this as oft as Until I come. That's what he said. Until I come. So we're going to hold fast and we're going to believe. Until he comes back. Another important thing before we receive of the emblems, if you have aught against anyone, unforgiveness. The Lord says, if you don't forgive, I won't forgive. So we need to ask for forgiveness and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Listen, we're imperfect. He's perfect. We're imperfect. And if there's things going on that are not of God, you ask God to forgive you to cleanse you and to wash you. This is a time of introspection that we are here before the Lord today. We say, Lord, wash me pure. Cleanse me, touch my mind, touch my spirit. Renew me. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, I thank you for the presence of thy Holy Spirit I thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross. Lord, you died on the cross for our salvation, for our healing, for our deliverance. Lord, if there's anything in our lives that is not pleasing to you, we pray this day that your mercy would be towards us today and that you would forgive us. Father, there's areas in our life where we're not, we have not forgiven. Lord, today we forgive. Help us to forgive. Help us to be obedient to your word. And Father, we trust you. We give you praise and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now we ask your blessing upon the bread ask your blessing upon the cup as we partake today. We give you praise. Let us partake of the bread. In 
Now let's take the cup. Lift your praise unto him this morning. Father, we worship you and we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. We thank you today, Lord, that you died for us. And because of that, we're saved. Because of that, we're healed this morning. We give you praise for the healing touch. We give you praise for our salvation. Would you stand to your feet? all over this place this morning. Closing moments of our time together. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I came this morning. God has done great things already. Let's believe him as we prepare to leave this place that we would continue to burn bright for his glory. Father, I thank you today for your word, for the anointing of thy spirit. I thank you, Lord, for salvation and your mercy in our lives. Father, if there be one that's listening to my voice through live stream that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray right now that as you move upon their spirit and draw them unto yourself, Pray that they would bow their hearts and accept you as Lord and Savior of their life. Then so many, Father, need a touch in their bodies. So, Lord, we hold fast to your promise. By your stripes we are healed, all sickness gone. The sinuses, the throat, the lungs today, we pray that you would touch no virus, no sickness, no disease in the name of Jesus. We pray healing against every organ, the heart. Lord, every ligament, Father, the blood system, the bones. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. Your word said, by his stripes we are healed. Touch the eyes, touch the ears, touch the mouth. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, the knee, the hip, the back, the mind, in the name of Jesus, let the healing virtue of your power manifest, Lord, today. Renew the mind, renew the spirit. Recreate where recreation is needed, O oh God, and restore to health, Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus, all cancer be gone. All sickness, all disease, in the name of Jesus, be gone. Virus, be gone, in the name of Jesus. Every lung, every sinus, every throat, in the name of Jesus, let the healing power of God manifest in Jesus' name. Loosen, Lord, we pray. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for 2020 vision in the name of Jesus. Eyes be healed today in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you praise. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Lift your hands and thank him for the answer. Oh, rejoice. Oh, rejoice. Lord, we rejoice in you, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, we praise your name. Oh, hallelujah, we give you praise. Lord, now go with us as we go our separate ways. Cause us to burn bright for you in this hour, Lord, we ask. Bring us back together as you would tarry once again. In the name of Jesus, everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. Go in the blessings of the Lord. You're worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. 
for from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory yeah. you are worthy of it all Jesus you are worthy of it all for from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory yeah. you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things to you are all things the glory I exalt thee I exalt thee I exalt thee